So the second approach is the security market line SML approach, or instead you can call it the CAPM, Capital Asset Pricing Model approach. Here, we don't need to know the uh, things that we do need to know to use the other, the first approach, the dividend growth model. We don't need to know the dividend amount. We don't need to know today's stock price or the dividend growth rate. Instead, we need to be given completely different set of information. <clears throat> and that's what the CAPM formula from chapter 13 um, you know, contains. So from chapter 13, uh, to calculate the return on stock investment, we take the risk-free rate, RF, and then we add the beta for the stock, the measure of the stock's systematic risk, um, multiplied by the difference between the expected return on the market portfolio and the risk-free rate, RF. So you need to know three things, the risk-free rate, the beta, or the measure of systematic risk for that stock, and the expected return on the market portfolio. So completely different three things from the three things that the other approach requires us to know. <coughs> um, so again, just to remind you what that CAPM model was about, it was about the relationship between, you know, risk or systematic risk and return for any financial security. Essentially, high risk, high return. The higher the risk, the higher the return. The security market line is, um, illustrates this positive relationship between risk and return. So that's kind of what that CAPEF model was all about. But uh, here we're just, um, you know, we're focusing on the equation for, it, for, for the CAPM, uh, the security market line, or the CAPM's uh, main formula. <coughs> okay, let's review the CAPM formula uh, with the following example. eBay has an estimated beta of 1.35. U.S. Treasury bills are paying about 4.9% return. The market risk premium on large company stocks is about 8.5%. What is eBay's cost of equity? <clears throat> we are given the beta, the Treasury bills, which is the risk-free rate, rate, and uh, something about the um, uh, large company stocks. So there is one little trick in um, this, in the calculations. We do need to use the security market line approach because <coughs> that's where we need to use things like the beta and the risk we rate. The formula says uh, the cost of equity from the firm's perspective, which is the same thing as the return on stock from the investor's perspective, should equal the risk we rate RF plus um, eBay's beta multiplied by, open parenthesis, expected return on the market portfolio minus the risk free rate. The trick that I mentioned is that 8.5% which is given is not the expected return on the market portfolio. It's market risk premium. By definition, it's expected return on the market minus the risk free rate. So what 8.5% is in this formula, it's the entire term in the parentheses. How would this problem be rewarded if we were actually given the ERM part, the expected return on the market? The problem would need to instead say the expected return on uh, the market portfolio or the expected return on large company stocks is so and so percent. But that's not the case here. Okay, so the rest is just a uh, plug and check. Cost of equity equals in decimals risk free rate 0 0.049 plus beta is 1.35 and we multiply the beta by uh, risk premium for the market 0.085 which gives us 
that's in decimals, which is 16.38%. Let's interpret this number. <clears throat> it means it costs the company, it costs eBay company, 16.38% per year to use the money raised from common stock issues. In other words, um, if eBay sells a share of stock for $100 and somebody pays $100 for the stock, then in return, every year in the future, this firm is obligated to pay back $16.38. So 16.38% of $100, hypothetically, if that's what the stock share costs, is $16.38. That's the cost of equity to this company every single year. That's the money that would be going back from the company to the investor who bought this company's shares. <coughs> Let's summarize the advantages and the disadvantages of this uh, security market line or the capital asset pricing model approach. Advantages it does account for risk in the formula, which is the beta part. It's also applicable to all companies, regardless of whether they're paying, they're currently paying dividends or not. Remember that was the issue with the other approach, the dividend growth model approach. Here it's not an issue, it can be applied to any company, <coughs> as long as we can estimate beta. <coughs> uh, in this Class, we actually skip the calculation of beta. It, there's actually a formula which uses covariance and two standard deviations, like or it can instead use the correlation coefficient. So something very complicated. We just looked at kind of the end result. The beta could be above one or below one or exactly one, which is for an average stock in the economy. Disadvantages. Um, all the disadvantages, all three, have to do with the idea that everything that the CAPEM formula um, you, uh, contains has to do with the future. So expected return on the treasury bills, expected beta. So things are changing over time. Uh, what the current beta is, is not necessarily what it will be like in three years and four years and so on. So everything is expected and that's always an issue. So we need to estimate the expected market risk premium which varies over time. What also varies over time is the expected beta. <coughs> and uh, because to estimate what may happen in the future, uh, we typically use past information to predict the future. Um, that may not always be accurate because a lot of things will change between today when we are making our estimates and um, some point of time in the future. <coughs>